Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. You know, one of the things I've always liked about watercolour is just how few tools you need to do the job. A set of paints, a couple of brushes, something to mix the paint up in, paper of course. It's surprising though how everyday domestic objects can also be useful. I never cease to be amazed at how inventive some people can be. I've seen all sorts of unlikely objects end up in people's painting boxes. Now while I must confess I'm a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to such things, preferring to stick with the traditional tools of the trade, there is one item that I found to be invaluable, and that's sandpaper. Let me show you. Sandpaper might seem like an unusual item to be associated with watercolour painting, but actually you'd be surprised just how useful it can be. It's great for ground frost, for instance. Here I've created a hint of frost by using dry brush technique. Scrubbing the surface of the paper with a sheet of sandpaper, however, is much more effective mostly because I'm able to follow the contours of the ground more closely. Altering the pressure allows me to increase or decrease the density of the frost while still maintaining the delicate finish. After all, if I'm too heavy-handed it'll start to look like snow. By far the most useful application I've found for sandpaper is when it comes to seascapes. Well, to show you how I use it, I first need a seascape. So I'm going to start by laying down a wet in wet wash. I'm thinking along the lines of a wild, untamed coastline with crashing waves and dramatic rocks. So after wetting the paper, I'm throwing some French ultramarine at it in a random, swirly, stormy weather kind of way. To increase the inclement mood, I wouldn't want anyone to get the wrong impression after all, I'm adding a little burnt umber to the mix to give the sky an angry look. It's a wet in wet wash so I have to work quickly to prevent the wash drying on me and creating hard lines, or worse, back runs. OK, so that'll do nicely. The mood is set. Once dry, it's time to start painting in the coastline. For this, I'm using French Ultramarine again. It's always a good idea to reuse colours as often as possible to maintain a sense of harmony. I do want a little variation though, so I'm now applying a bit of cadmium yellow. And now comes the fun bit. If the sea is hurling itself against the coastline as much as we're meant to believe, then the base of the cliffs needs to be obliterated by spray. The easiest and most immediate way to do this is by carefully lifting it out with a piece of tissue. Well, it's looking OK, but the headland is coming across as slightly flat and two-dimensional. Building this up is a simple matter of increasing the intensity of the mix slightly by adding more of the French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber and then overlaying a new portion of hillside. Well, it's important to maintain the crashing spray along the base by softening the edge off with a damp brush then repeating the dabbing procedure with a scrunched up piece of tissue. The technical term for this is stopping out, 
something we all did as teenagers, I'm sure, and the more random, the better, if we're to believe that it is what it's meant to be. In watercolour, we work from light to dark, so it makes perfect sense to build up a scene in this way, increasing the mix gradually by adding more pigment and overlaying shapes to create new objects that appear closer. Increasing the tonal values of objects to create the illusion of depth within a composition is what we call aerial perspective. In this example, the darker the rocks are, the closer to us they seem. Once again, I'm softening off the bottom edge with a damp brush and then lightly dabbing at it with a piece of tissue. At some point, of course, I have to start painting in the sea. Well, it'll come as no surprise then when I tell you that I'm using French ultramarine with a little burnt umber added. My brush strokes should make sense explaining the shape of the waves and leaving a smattering of highlights to suggest a few foam holes, but also leaving the spray as the dominant highlight as much as possible. Having almost forgotten what the reason was for painting this scene in the first place, I've added a few darker rocks to the foreground to enable me to show you where sandpaper comes into the equation. Well, it's all quite straightforward really. Sandpaper is great for creating the smaller but sharp edged spray that would be visible in the foreground, particularly along the base of the darker rocks. As with the ground frost, Creating the spray is simply a matter of scrubbing the surface of the paper with the abrasive sandpaper to remove pigment. This works particularly well on rough textured paper, although the texture of the sandpaper can produce a similar, if not quite so strong, effect on smoother papers. Well. I hope you found that interesting and that it perhaps inspires you to go rummaging around in the garage or the garden shed to see what you can use in your watercolour painting. I'd be very interested to hear what unusual everyday object you use. Until next time, take care.